Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's Forex and Gold Fundamental and Technical Supply and Demand Analysis. If you're new uh, to watching my, my videos on my channel and discovered me uh, through, uh, through YouTube or any other platform, a warm welcome to you. And if you are a returning uh, watcher and subscriber, a equally warm welcome to you. And please don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you find the content that I provide useful as it's a free way to support the channel and get the quality content out to those that may uh, appreciate it, right? So um, the week ahead, 29th of January, so coming up in the Forex world. So next week um, in the United States, eyes will be on the Federal Reserve's interest rate decision, non-farm payrolls, wage metrics, and the unemployment rate. So a lot going on in the uh, in the US also jolts job openings ISM manufacturing and services PMI Michigan consumer sentiment and factory orders will also will all catch attention um, and really that's important because it will determine really um, and all those data points will determine whether the in, uh, Federal Reserve are likely to uh, cut interest rates in March or whether they will um, tend to uh, Tend to hold interest rates until maybe a bit later on, which will definitely affect the dollar. And I think really the uh, the, the the key news uh, is going to be non-farm uh, payrolls, and, um, and so let's see what happens uh, there. So globally, market focus will shift to Bank of England monetary policy decisions and Q4 GDP growth rates for the euro area. Additionally, inflation figures for Australia and the euro area will be closely watched. Finally, manufacturing PMIs from China, Switzerland and Canada uh, and jobless rates for Japan and the euro area will round out the week. So a very, very busy week from a, uh, a news data perspective. And so again, really the themes are um, right now, whether central banks are, which central bank is likely to uh, cut first um, in comparison to which one is likely to hold for, um, hold last basically, or hold the longest. And so, um, yeah, very busy week this week. So should be some volatility after a lack of volatility um, in the in the in the last week, so this week I think the uh, market is just positioning itself for now some uh, some explosive potential moves. And so um, before I get into the week's um, forex analysis, just wanted to go over really um, a trade analysis breakdown on the new Australian New Zealand dollar. So this is a trade I took profit on earlier this week, and uh, really the entry was around uh, this. Uh, 107.34 and really it was uh, kind of based on higher time frame higher time frame uh, demand zone so if we zoom out a little bit and uh, we had the uh, basically a demand zone from here fundamentally I want it to be a buyer of the Australian dollar over the New Zealand dollar anyway and we kind of come back down to this uh, this demand zone and really um, understanding kind of it sounds obvious highs and lows but you really want to uh, look to trade or I do anyway a trade around um, understanding you know premiums and, uh, and discounts right and so uh, I thought that the Australian dollar was a discount fundamentally against the New Zealand dollar um, and uh, took a trade pretty much uh, at the 107.36s, 37s uh, with about a 17 pip stop and originally I took uh, half profits off uh, at a one to one and as prices went slightly higher, I think maybe around here, I decided to take the rest of the uh, the profit off as I, I thought that the uh, the market is likely to kind of move in a bit of an auction, bit of a range. So uh, that was a profitable trade uh, this week. So bit quick breakdown and that level was uh, also being used not only as demand, right? We made higher highs, higher lows, also as well it acted as support and resistance in the past if you go down to something like a lower time frame you'll be able to see it a bit more clearly so this is a 12 hour chart you got support there resistance resistance and so you've got some again some support there and then this whole area of demand so whenever you have a wide zone of demand yeah, it's best to kind of break down um, the area also as well this was a bit of a stop hunt as well for those uh, traders who understand uh, stop hunts or in a private mentoring uh, group there was a stop hunt right below there so um, 
Although there wasn't great news out for the Australian dollar on the day, um, that was uh, the trade and pretty much uh, worked out um, okay. So not as much as I kind of wanted, but I was probably looking at somewhere around these highs originally, but uh, I think I was right in the short term anyway to take some profits off at these highs as, um, again, fundamentally things have changed slightly or may change slightly for the uh, for the New Zealand dollar, and there's a pretty a bit more strength uh, incoming for the New Zealand dollar. Anyways, let's get into now the week ahead and starting off on the uh, the dollar index, and this is a weighted <coughs> dollar index um, uh, calculation. So it's not the DXY or the USDX. This is weighted equally weighted. Um, and if you want the calculation, uh, the, there's a link to a video in the top right hand side of the screen right now. Uh, watch that video and click on that link and you'll be able to get the equally weighted um, calculations to put in your trading view chart. So um, looking at the dollar overall, um, again, this week is really the prices, you know, traders would kind of describe it as going sideways, but it's really just uh, price being accepted in terms of a, an auction, buyers and sellers are in agreement that the value of the dollar, you know, is worth, um, you know, the, between that high and that low, right? But we did get some news which was quite decent and uh, uh, took economists by surprise. And it says US GDP grew 3.3% last quarter, capping unexpectedly strong years. So years expansion defied recession calls as inflation cooled. So how many? Uh, doom and gloomers have you watched uh, on social media calling for um, you know the US dollar to you know collapse and go into some sort of uh, um, you know disappear and things like that the US dollar is going absolutely nowhere and um, you know whether you agree with it or not dollar is still here uh, for the foreseeable future and uh, again, a lot of traders have been caught out, you know, on the wrong side of the market, expecting the dollar um, to, to devalue. So again, um, you know, has, it's had an unexpectedly strong year. And so the U.S. economy's fourth quarter growth trounced forecasts uh, as cooling inflation fueled consumer spending, capping a surprisingly strong year at the five recession calls. And so um, the significance really of this is that the Federal Reserve are likely to um, hold rates for longer simply because um, there's less urgency to actually cut rates. Cutting rates typically happens in the um, part of the uh, economic cycle where you're heading into a recession. And although, yes, there is, you know, the, the, the economy is contracting, it's not contracting as much as, um, you know, the, uh, the market is expecting, which is actually a positive. So for now, I think the dollar is still looking like a buy on pullbacks. But again, that does depend upon what happens um, this uh, week with all the news that is coming out. But my bias, if the data supports the narrative, I will continue to look for uh, buying opportunities on the dollar. So uh, dollar strengthening at the moment. So that's brilliant uh, for anyone who's going uh, long dollar. So I'm looking for any kind of pullback, you know, to, to, to kind of come back down. And if the, again, price comes down, but the data is supporting dollar buys, then that's going to be the first area to look for a buy uh, on the dollar in terms of uh, not necessarily looking at buying the dollar, uh, the dollar index, but you're looking at this as confluence. So you look for price to come down into this area here and then looking for dollar buys on you know, actual dollar uh, pairs, um, depending on obviously the, the, uh, the, the quote currency that you wanna buy it against, right? And so that's really the, uh, the plan of action. But again, I think this week is gonna be a very um, interesting week. And uh, after a week of uh, a few days, quite a few days, matter of fact, of you know, this, this tight uh, price action, uh, we should get some, some moves and some directional moves anyways. Uh, so moving on to the uh, dollar yen, the dollar yen again, the same thing this week. It's really, you know, prices have really only moved uh, in considering, uh, what's that, 215 pips, you know, over the past however many days. So you think about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight trading days, t prices stayed within this, uh, this tight range. So not much trading opportunity, but... 
um, in terms of a higher time frame trading opportunity, lower time frames, you'd have to kind of, you know, scalp and get in and out. But um, overall, the uh, dollar yen, um, I think the, the yen actually is, is starting to look like a, a buy. And it says here that uh, Japan bond yields, bank shares jump on BOJ, Bank of Japan rate hike bets. Now, the Bank of Japan are the only um, central bank that are looking to uh, hike rates. And I don't say the only central bank, but the ones in the uh, like the G10, I think maybe G8, uh, that are looking to uh, hike rates, whereas everyone else is on a cutting cycle. So that, by default, really should um, end up supporting the yen overall. Now, the timing is the is the issue right and so uh, and also as well the data needs to support the uh, the buying if uh, that if that doesn't come to fruition then the, it looks like the dollar is likely to probably maybe go in slightly higher but it's going to be very difficult for any um uh, for, for for the dollar to i think go past the one for uh one five one one five twos because even if the yen hold rates for the rest of the year if the dollar start to cut rates, which I think they are, uh, we're in that political cycle, then I do think that um, uh, there is still downside uh, to be had on this pair. So upside looks a bit more limited. Downside looks actually quite nice when we zoom out and the potential's down to maybe the one three zero uh, area um, over the uh, over the course of this year. So these are the levels you know that you're looking towards in terms of uh, buying and selling. Um, uh, the dollar or the uh, or the yen at the moment. Moving on to the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD again um, a really tight range in terms of uh, price action. Price again on this pair moved about has only moved around about 127 pips over the past again seven eight nine days. So. Not great for anyone who's looking for uh, some movement. But again, this week, uh, with all the data that's coming out, we could see either a pullback into you know, one of these zones, uh, either to the upside or to the downside. Of course, it really does depend upon uh, what happens with the, uh, the, with the data. And um, also as well, uh, I think personally, I'm looking for more of a, uh, if we get a bit more of a pullback, depending obviously what the data says, but um, if, as long as the, uh, the the Federal Reserve aren't too dovish and uh, rate cuts are being kicked into uh, the future, into further into the future, then I think I'm still going to look for some long trades on the U.S. dollar. I think they're in a better place than the um, than the Canadian dollar at the moment. So let's see what happens there. Uh, looking at the pound dollar, and again, pound dollar. Uh, really not going anywhere this week so lots of positioning going on uh, in the market again over the past week or so you've only seen about 124 pip moves so yeah um, again nothing's really different from um, uh, what we uh, kind of were talking about last week either of these zones could potentially be a breakout because there is in fact um, some Bank of England News coming out this week, and announcements from um, Andrew Bailey, but um, also as well, uh, recently the pound has been just surging anyway, and it says traders pair rate cut bets after PMI beat. So um, the uh, market's pricing fewer than 100 basis points on Bank of England cuts in two, uh, 2024, and composite PMI expectedly rose in January, costs jumped. And um, really, you know, it says here is a quote, strong PMI numbers from the UK, which despite all the fretting about the risk of the UK slipping into recession, suggests the economic outlook is looking quite bright still, said uh, Stuart Cole, chief macroeconomist at Equity Capital in London. Robust growth and strengthening price pressures are not a scenario the Bank of England will want to be loosening policy into. And that's basically what's happening with, for example, the US dollar. We spoke about the US dollar earlier um, in terms of GDP, you know, growing uh, more than expected. So it's the same, basically, logic uh, that applies to the uh, the pound uh, as well, right? So if the pound is seen avoiding a recession, then you should see some strength. But again, uh, when it comes to two strong currencies, um, uh, then, you know, price is likely to do something like this. And this isn't a pair that I'm really kind of interested in at the moment, but if you are 
um, you know, do want to buy one or the other, then you're looking at really these uh, either a supply zone up at the top uh, or a demand zone around here. You can kind of extend the demand zone uh, down to around here. You've also got a bit of uh, support and resistance in this area, quite accurate support and resistance. Same thing around here as well. So these are some nice uh, levels. Again, if it breaks out beyond that though, you do have uh, some supply zones right here and uh, right here as well. So some supply zones uh, in this area. So again, are you looking to buy the dollar? Are you looking for short trades? Are you looking to buy the uh, pounds? Then you're looking for moves back down into these uh, demand zone areas, preferably with some sort of uh, support and resistance uh, as some confluence that you can see right here as well, where you've got nice, uh, some nice confluence there within those, uh, within that demand zone uh, here. So that's really what, what you're looking for, uh, for the pound dollar, uh, pound yen, interesting, very interesting. I think the pound, uh, again, uh, is looking like it could strengthen, but it's at a really um, uh, a high that hasn't really been touched since uh, 2015. So this could actually be seen as a decent shorting opportunity. Technically, it's a really nice short. I do like it, but fundamentally, um, I think if the Bank of England do come out dovish, then that's likely to happen. The pound is probably due a pullback anyway, but. Um, also as well against the uh, the yen uh, if the yen does get its acting gear in terms of uh, data supporting the rate hike narrative sooner then in fact that's this is just going to be a sell anyway regardless of what uh, the pound does in the um over the medium term because i think the market has to kind of start to price in now rate hikes for the yen and this is actually a nice spot for to look for any kind of short trades um Looking for the euro dollar and the euro dollar at the moment. Again, not really much movement over the euro dollar. Um, prices have only moved 100 and, 110, 120 pips um, over the past, again, few, uh, maybe week or week and a half. So, not much movement on that euro dollar. So, waiting for it to, you know, waiting for this week to, to really kind of be the decider in terms of um, the, the, the news that is potentially coming out. I say potentially, but it is coming out and uh, the potential is whether it goes to the upside or to the downside. And um, some nice levels within that demand zone there. Also as well, you do have a decent area of supply um, and uh, resistance within that supply zone. So um, Let's see what happens here, but with regards to the euro, my bias really is to the downside, continued downside. It says here that traders see deeper, quicker cuts from ECB. Money markets point to more than 50 basis points of easing by June, and German bonds rally with two-year yield down as much as 10 basis points. So it says here traders amped up bets on the extent of interest, uh, yeah, the, on the extent of interest rate cuts expected from the European Central Bank saying President Christine Lagarde gave more emphasis to the economic challenges faced by the bloc than to inflation. And so, um, again, both are looked at uh, in terms of inflation and um, and GDP, but she's obviously, uh, they've obviously interpreted that she's more worried about uh, GDP. So, uh, ultimately, when we look at the, uh, the euro, the euro are facing way more issues than the uh, than the US at the moment is still still a bit puzzling as to why uh, the market would be pricing in rate cuts for the US uh, dollar um, more than uh, or, or sooner than they would for for Europe. But at the same time, um, there's an opportunity to buy the uh, the dollar if those rate cuts do get priced out. So. Um, I think any pullbacks into this area here is going to be nice uh, selling opportunities right there or even back basically back up to uh, this area here, the uh, 110s to uh, 109.50s. 
So that's really where my bias is for now. Of course, it does depend upon the data. Again, you can see lots of data out this week, um, you know, from GDP growth rate uh, for the euro, jolts. So depending on what happens this week is going to be definitely either uh, a major turning point, right, in for the for the euro fortunes on a weaker dollar, or we're going to see continuation to the downside. Either way, if my bias is to buy the dollar, um, I'm going to have to wait for a pullback anyway. So um, I'm not looking to you know to 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 buy the dollar at you know these lows. I've got to wait for a bit of a bargain price. So uh, for me, I'm looking at those types of pullbacks. But if there is um, a reason to buy the euro or sell the dollar, then course any pullbacks into that 107 maybe even the 108 the top of this demand zone would be decent to look for a long trade um, moving on to the uh, euro yen and I think the euro yen <clears throat> I think the yen is a is again against the euro I think eventually this year we should see yen strength and so I do think that these um, these uh, these zones will be very interesting if prices do come back up to them. I am interested in this higher area, the 16311 uh, area to the 16430 as a as a long as a sorry a long trade for the for the for the yen, not for the euro. Not looking to buy the euro at all this year until the data really kind of supports buying the euro. Um, so I'm, my bias is really to the short side. So I'm waiting for either prices to come up to here and then looking for shorts or looking for shorts in this area around here so let's see what happens but if you do want to be a buyer of the euro of course any pullbacks down into that demand zone that should be very nice for a buy and that's a nice technical level as well in terms of uh support and resistance in conjunction with some sort of uh, fresh area of demand uh moving on to the uh euro pound and uh, again my bias was really to try and look for short trades on this the prices just haven't pulled back enough so um still looking for overall uh, bearishness on this pair to buy the, the 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 pound i think the pound is in a much better place in terms of uh, economically and also as well from a monetary policy perspective they're looking to the market is pricing in later rate cuts and this is the reason why you're seeing this move to the downside it's just really uh, how to kind of get in on this area so uh, changing that to demand so looking to buy the uh, the pound if you're looking for short trades and the nearest uh, supply zone is going to be right there so really a pullback into this area here and decided there I think and also as well you do have some support and resistance within that area so again going down into like the lower time frames you can see that area touch touch very very nice and in fact uh, there could be a stop hunt above that area that would be even nicer um, if there was a stop hunt above there and also an unfair auction that needs to be filled around here so um, lots of reasons to look for short trades in and around this uh, this round number uh, the 0 0.86 area and even just above that would be quite nice for a short trade uh, zooming back out and moving on to the uh, where are we <clears throat> the Aussie dollar now the Aussie dollar again um, I think this hasn't even gone triple digits I think this might have only gone yeah 70 pips it's only been travel uh, uh, within this auction of about 70 pips so no volatility is totally dried up last week but um, again this week could be uh, very interesting in terms of directions um, depending on what comes out so I think the path of least resistance at the moment is a tough one to, to kind of tell because both um, I'm, I'm a buyer of the dollar at the moment as well as my bias is to buy the Australian dollar so um, this is not necessarily a pair that I'm looking to trade personally but if you are, then you really probably anywhere from now, any pullback into that demand zone or even a fresher area of demand just below that, just at the 65 cent area and below would be decent for a uh, buy trade and buying the Australian dollar against the US dollar. And uh, any trades to the short side would be uh, at this supply zone right here. Uh, so those are really the options. And then finally, but not least, you've got gold. 
and gold um, again really being driven by um, uh, the, the, the strength of the dollar at the moment as well as the interest rate cutting cycle so uh, it really does depend upon whether you're a dollar bull or dollar bear at the moment if you're a dollar bull then you're looking for short trades if you're a dollar um, bear then you're looking for really like long trades around this area of uh, of demand so yeah it's um uh, gold at the moment it isn't necessarily reacting but again uh, we should have some decent volatility uh, coming into the uh, uh, this week with all the news data that we've got coming out so um that's it for this week i uh, hope you enjoyed the analysis again don't forget to like subscribe uh to the channel and uh, i will see you all uh, in the next video take care